come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. Father, we thank you because this morning you have come for that purpose. And I pray that as we learn from your word, you will continue to bless us together because you have started doing it, O oh Lord. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning and pray the name of the living God. Amen. Praise him again. Amen. Pleasure and nice to be here once again this morning that we may worship the Lord our God together. Receive greetings from uh, my wife. Now we are two in the house. Others are in school. Another one stays on her own. So meaning you are catching up. <laughs> Pray the Lord. <laughs> but do you receive the greeting from my wife? Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, this morning, this is the first Sunday of this month. And we have as a diocese, a new theme that comes from the psalm that we read, Psalm 95, the psalm that we know, the Venite, the song of triumph. You remember those days when you would sing the Venite? Yes. I think we, we, there is a need to, 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 to change sometimes, Chairman Sa, and uh, the, the, the people's warden and then have Martins followed by Holy Communion. Because when the structure is Martins followed by Holy Communion, we will lead the first part of the service using the 1662, the morning liturgy, and we'll be seated here. Then, after the sermon, when you are singing the hymn for for offer tree, those that are not communicant, definitely everybody's a communicant, everybody who attends this, this, this service as a communicant, but you remember those days, right? Those who are not communicant would go and them that are communicant get closer as now the team moves at the altar to celebrate the Eucharist. So we'll get an opportunity to be singing the Venite, the song of a child. Especially this month, which can happen, you know? Because we go back and then we internalize your singing it as you give an invitation. The theme of our diocese for this month is being rooted in a celebration and worship and adoration. Rooted in celebration, worship, and adoration. We are celebrating as a diocese 40 years of God's faithfulness from the time we became a diocese from the larger Mount Kenya diocese. And the torch of faith has been moving from one dinari to the other. And of course, sometimes even depending on how the dinari has organized itself, from one parish to another parish. It started with, of course, the Dumberi Dinari, because that is where the cathedral is. Then it is, it is moving around our diocese for 40 days under the 40 dinaries, celebrating. There was time we were with the bishop at uh, St. Julian, and uh, he, he was, he was uh, telling us, the people, the other few individuals that we were with, that, you know, he did not expect that uh, people will be excited as they are and are celebrating then they were telling him, Lord Bishop, the revival is coming back, pray the Lord. They igniting the fire of faith. Because people are excited and those that have not received the torch of faith are looking forward like, when will our time come? But a caution may be put forward to us. 
that let not it be just a celebration because the torch of faith has come in our deanery and it, we, leave, we are left where we were as far as our faith is concerned. If we are celebrating God's faithfulness, then definitely it should be celebration. And that is where we are as a diocese. This psalm is a call to worship and an invitation in general to everyone to praise God. Highlighting God's greatness. Highlighting God's sovereignty. Serving therefore both a celebration of God's greatness, but at the same time a reminder and a caution of the importance of faithfulness and humility in our relationship with our God. It talks therefore about two things. One, it is an exaltation and an invitation to come and praise God. And so like the person who chose hymns was having that in mind. The first hymn was just admitted, let us praise, praise God, oh my soul. Praise the Lord. Praise God, oh my soul, this morning. Praise God, oh my soul, even if the body I'm not as vibrant as I used to be. Praise God, oh my soul. Even if things are not the way we would have liked them to be as a country. Praise God, oh my soul. Because of the breath. An invitation. Thank you for the people who chose the, the, the hymn. Praise God, oh my soul. It has that part of praising the Lord. But it also has a second part of warning. Those two parts are the ones that are contained in Psalm 95. Yes, it is a song of triumph, but it has that caution in a form of a reminder. The first one, the first theme that is contained, the exaltation, the invitation, the open invitation to praise the Lord, to worship Him, is anchored or rather understood in the context of ancient times when the Jewish people would exalt and excite each other to come together and make use of their voices in honor of the Lord their God, to celebrate him as the rock of their salvation. And the psalmist had seen it. He had seen how this God is a faithful God, a forgiving God. How this God is a God who keeps promises. He had seen how this God will not let you until he accomplishes what he has purposed in your life. To the point that despite the way he had disappointed this God, but God gave a testimony about him and for him. A man after my own heart. <coughs> so as he was inviting others as it were in the ancient times among the Jewish people to excite. You know, I was trying to imagine how sometimes the politicians would want to excite us. And telling us good things, which is okay. But sometimes when you go back and the reason is that these, these people have said this and this and this. Like now, personally, I'm asking myself, okay, they are saying and they have highlighted that the deputy president has stolen this, 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 this. Can they also highlight theirs so that we compare who has stolen more than the other? Do you look at where I'm coming from? You know, they know how to excite her. They have excited And the people are saying, oh, a, a lady yesterday in the new, no, I don't know that it was yesterday, she was commenting, I think in Nakuru, that uh, they said that it is bottom up. And now it's like uh, the lady saying that it's like they are being taken with the, 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 their legs so up. And then when Angaria Chini, Pesa in Anguka, in fact, that was she was doing in Swahili, Arafu and Aokota, Pani on your bottom up. You know, you get to do I don't know whether, whether you, you, you had that, isn't it? But in a way, the lady seemed to have a point that she's making, right? But then, can the same people who moved the motion, I'm not 
taking any stand and being just like a Gen Z, accountability, you know? That uh, we, 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 we get the highlight of everyone. From the list, the MCA, to the top. Then we judge. Hello? Why, why can't we be excited as believers? You see how they excite, excite us. And you have seen how they are conducting, you know, the, the public opinion. They are basic. It is not a conducting public opinion. No. It is sensitizing on their opinion. Not conducting public opinion. Because... If I want to be honest and sincere, I would come and ask you, what do you think about this? I leave it to you to decide. Would I have voted yes or not? That would be a sincere public opinion. The Jewish people would excite, that is the point, and exalt others to come together to worship the Lord. And that is why David is saying, come. Let us come and worship. No, he includes himself. That is ex exaltation. Come, let us worship. I included the one who is inviting others. And he knew why. So the, the importance of a communal worship and the gratitude. And the reasons why we have to come together and worship the Lord because of his majesty the king, because of his power over the earth, as David describes, power over all creation. And therefore, beloved, because it is clear that David is talking about four things. Number one, care. Number two, guidance. Number three, protection. Number four, provision. Because as he talks, we are the sheep of his pasture. Meaning, he is the shepherd. Consequently, therefore, the shepherd we know, he cares. The shepherd guides. The shepherd protects. The shepherd provides. And that is the goal and why the psalmist is inviting all of us to celebrate. To worship him. To sing songs of a triumph. Let us, therefore, as a Christians today, stir each other up to come together to worship the Lord. No matter what, no matter the situation out there, remind your neighbor and call on each other. Come, let us worship our God. Then he say, praise the Lord, O my soul. Because of what you can enumerate. But among them, there is a care, guidance, protection, and provision. The second point that is captured in the psalm, from verse 8 onwards, there's a caution in a form of a reminder of the Israelite rebellion in the wilderness. And the caution is given. And as it be given, it is urging us to remain faithful and not to harden our hearts against God. Remain faithful and do not harden your heart. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. As you did at Meribah, and you did that day at Massa in the wilderness where your fathers tested and tried me, though they had seen what I did. For 40 years, I was angry with that generation. I said, there are people whose hearts go astray, and they have not known my ways. I declared on earth in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. Only Caleb and Joshua did. It is a caution that we have to remain faithful, that we should not harden our hearts, that when an invitation to come and worship the Lord, we should hearken to that invitation. And therefore, 
as he concludes, the psalmist concludes, he invites people to enter into God's rest, whether physical or spiritual. That is state of peace and fulfillment, which is found in God's obedience, in our obedience to God, in our humility, in our faithfulness with our God. Being rooted in celebration, being rooted in worship, being rooted in adoration does not come overnight. It follows a routine of always, regular routine of always acknowledging God and his guidance, his care, his protection, his provision, his blessings in our life. It is a training for, it, for us to be rooted in celebration. It is not just celebrating today and it's over, no. Rooted in celebration. That wherever you are, your heart, your soul is praising the Lord. Whether in the morning, noon time, or in the evening, your heart, let your heart always praise the Lord. Then you say, yes, I'm rooted in celebration. I'm rooted in worship and praising the Lord. Oh, come, let us worship the Lord, our God, our Maker. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.